So hi everyone, this is um, a quick PowerPoint lesson covering the next part of the course um, based on the stuff that we you were doing on your own last week. Now it's new technology to me so bear with me in case I make a bit of a muck up. So, so it's on the topic of electricity obviously and we're going to cover electric fields which we briefly spoke about in last week's lesson and we're also going to look at potential difference or voltage it means the same thing but you'll get a more precise definition of it uh, in the next few slides so i thought this would be useful to include uh, this information here so this is taken from the sqa course specification that you can have access to if you really want to um, it lists the knowledge and understanding parts of the course that they could ask you a question about. Obviously there's problem solving questions they could ask which would be related to this, but this would be you know, a protocol to go to. So first thing is the knowledge and understanding that a charge particle experiences a force in an electric field. We'll look at that in the next couple of slides. And then this one's a wee bit more complicated. It's about the path that a charge particle would follow in various scenarios, like between two charged metal plates, single point charge, two opposite point charges, two like charges, etc. And then the last one is what is potential difference in voltage, a more precise definition of what that is. Okay, first and second year science, you did a whole topic on electricity and uh, static electricity, which involved looking at the different types of charge that we can have. So for example, here, uh, it says when a small positive charge is placed near another charged object, then it's going to either be retracted or repelled. Electrostatic repulsion, that's called. And so these charges experience a force. So if it was like a positive and a negative charge, they will attract each other, opposites attract. And then if the two charges are the same, then they will repel each other. And that's a force that will um, act on the charges. And there's your um, charge balloon makes the hair stand an end because there's a force the charge balloon attracts the hair so there's a force acting so this area around about a charged object where uh, it will experience a force is called an electric field so if you imagine the area around about that positive charge there will be a force and um, we're going to look at that in more detail in the next few slides but it's a bit like if you think of a magnetic field so the area around about a magnet, where if you brought up something magnetic or another magnet, then there would be a force either pulling it towards it or whatever. So uh, we'll look at that in the next slide. So we can represent an electric field by drawing an electric field diagram, funnily enough. And it's there to show the strength and the direction of the field. So here's two electric field diagrams. This one is around about a positive point charge and this one is around about a negative point charge. So you can see there's some lines on it with arrows. Now these are called electric field lines and it is there to represent the strength. We'll talk about that in a second and the direction. So in this case the direction of the arrows is away from the positive charge and towards the negative because the the line the direction of the line is given to be that the way that a small positive charge would move if it was free to do so. So I'll try and show you what I mean by that. So if I can manage this, so if I put in that there's a positive charge here, now that positive charge is going to be repelled by that positive charge, so it's going to move away. So that's why those arrows are. Um, pointing away from the positive charge. The opposite thing would be true with the negative charge. If I introduced a positive charge here, then obviously this time it's going to be attracted towards the, the negative charge. Okay, so these would be the electric fields around a positive point charge and a negative point charge. Now the strength bit comes from how close together the field lines are. The closer the fit together the field lines are, the stronger 
the electric field. So right close to the positive charge or the negative charge, the field lines are closer together. So therefore you get a stronger electric field, there'll be a stronger force closer to the positive and closer to the negative. And obviously these field lines are uh, spreading out as they move away from the point charge. So therefore the uh, electric field would be getting smaller or less the further you are away from the, the charges. So these ones are some more electric field patterns that you need to be kind of aware of. This one is between a positive charge and a negative charge. So it's two charges together. And again, the arrows, don't know if you can quite make them out, but they're going away from the positive towards the negative. And this one it's two positives, but the pattern would be the same if that was two negatives. So we've got electric field between a positive and a negative charge. Now remember on the previous slide, the direction of these electric field lines would be the way that a positive charge would move. So if you imagine I put a positive charge, see in this area here, it's going to be repelled from this one, but it's going to be attracted to that. But it would follow this kind of loopy path to get to the negative. And in this one, if you introduce a positive charge anywhere between the two, there's a kind of repulsive force acting here. So the, the charge would move up and around. So um, these two are like two point charges, kind of a bit weird, and there's not really many questions that will get asked about it, but you just need to be aware of the shape of the pattern. This one is a bit different because we have two parallel metal plates, and the electric field lines this time, hopefully, you can see, are equally spaced. So there's not a case of them spreading out and the electric field getting less. The electric field is going to be the same anywhere between the two. This is called a uniform electric field. And anywhere between these two metal plates, another charged particle would experience a force. And so therefore that has consequences later on, uh, specifically at higher physics. But again, at Nat 5, you need to be aware of the, the pattern and what it looks like. So the last slide was all to do with um, electric fields. So the last couple of slides are all about uh, voltage or to give it its fancy physics name, potential difference. So there's a whole stack of writing on here. I'll try and summarize it as I go along, but well, let's start with this simple circuit here where we've got a cell or a battery. That's a resistor. That's next week's lessons. Uh, that's a lamp and that would be a voltmeter. So the battery is the source of energy for this circuit. And the battery is uh, got chemical energy which it converts into electrical energy and then that electrical energy is what pushes electrons around the circuit remember last week we introduced what electric current was it's a flow of charges and at that five we usually talk about it's a flow of electrons so the battery is what pushes electrons around the circuit in this case in an anti-clockwise direction from the negative terminal of the cell round towards the positive terminal of the cell. And so the voltage or potential difference is actually a measure of how much energy is given to the electrons. In some ways it's called the electrical push. So it's the, the energy, the voltage that pushes the electrons around the circuit. And it's a measure of the energy given to those electrons. Now in this circuit, these electrons will lose that energy as they flow through the wires and through the components, in this case, the resistor and the lamp. Now, if we just focus on the lamp because it's easier to look at, first of all, the energy that the electrons have will be converted into heat and light. And um, that voltmeter there will measure the voltage or potential difference across the lamp. And that's kind of a measure of the energy that will be lost by the charges as they go around the circuit. If we put another voltmeter across the resistor, then again later on in the course you'll see that the voltage across that and the voltage across that, or potential difference, equals the energy supplied or the voltage across the, the lamp there. So on that last slide there's a whole lot of information about potential difference in voltage. So hopefully this these three bullet points will kind of help summarize what you need to know. So first of all, the potential difference or voltage across a battery or power supply is the energy supplied to the electrons that 
make up the electrical current in the circuit. And so therefore, um, you know, bigger the voltage, the more energy is given to the charges, in this case, electrons. Potential difference of voltage can be some simplified down to PD uh, or voltage measured in volts with a normal capital V symbol for volts. And so um, if the battery or power supply is connected up in a circuit with components, for example, a lamp or whatever, then the potential difference across that component will be the measure of the energy lost by the electrons as their, as their energies get transferred um, into other forms like heat and light in the case of a lamp. So the potential difference across a battery is the supplying the energy to the charges and the potential difference or voltage across the component is using up that energy. Okay, so that's that. Um, just a quick PowerPoint, hopefully it helps a wee bit. There will be, I'll post this on Teams uh, along with some questions and some other bits and bobs for you to do. And then later on in the week, we'll do a, uh, an assignment of a quiz, multiple choice quiz or maybe something else. Um, I'll see how we go on. And then you complete that next week. And um, good luck.